goddess of wisdom. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. This is what usually I wear at Pokemon Columbus. <laughs> but anyway, you all are used to fire. I mean, you take it for granted. I mean, and I'm not saying not necessarily, but using it for the rituals and all that. You cook your food, you keep warm with it, you build with it. I mean, I'm pretty certain you wouldn't be here to this very day about it. And this shows how old my stroll is because it keeps on falling apart. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you how thankful we are about this. And I'm going to tell you the whole history about Prometheus. And afterwards, we have a little activity for you that you can do and take home with. And I will have copies of the information as well. But let's start out with Prometheus. He was one of the Titans. Now, the Titans, the Titans and Titanesses, the female Titans, were members of the second order of the divine beings, descended from primordial deities to proceeding upon the Olympian deities. Based upon Mount Otharis, the Titans were famously included the 12, first twelve children of the primordial Gaia, Mother Earth, and Uranus, Fire's Father Sky. They were giant deities of incredible strength, who ruled during the legendary Golden Age, and were composed of the first pantheon of the Greek deities. Prometheus, who at some point were sent for, to Tartus, his brother, by the enraged Zeus, who didn't accept the Titans' fight against him in the famous Battle of the Titans. This war was fought to decide which generation of gods would domain over, over the universe, which ended in the victory for, of course, us Olympians. Tartus was the third of the primary deities, followed by Chaos and Gaia. And I could go, and there was further information about that to go into it. Tardis was so bad that, as I have quoted here from Zeus, that Tardis is, quote, as far beneath Hades as heaven is high above the earth. <laughs> <laughs> but Prometheus was not involved in the war. So Zeus saved him from the fate, like from Tardis, and gave him a important mission or a task to form man from water and earth. Prometheus accomplished this task. But while working on this creation, he grew fond of man, mankind. I'm certain enough that's very true for you, any of you mortals, that whenever you are fixated on any sort of project, you have that bond. And that was true for Prometheus. He, so instead of living on humanity, with Olympus, with us, he spent most of his time with men to help him. I mean, despite the fact we respected him, I mean, I said greeting to him every now and then, of course, in passing. But as the times passed on, Prometheus saw an issue with the mortals. They started not to be happy. They were hunched out in caves in the holes of the earth, shivering in the cold because there was no means of keeping them warm. No means of, of they were starving, starving. They were hunted by beasts and if not one another. The most miserable of all living creatures. In any case, it was Zeus's idea not to have them have any sort of power whatsoever. They created them, they just have to live. So Prometheus boldly went to Zeus and begged him to give fire to the people so that they might have a little comfort through the long dreary months of winter. And as I quote from Zeus, I will not, said Zeus, not one spark will share with them. For if man had fire, they might be strong and wise like us. And after a while, they would drive us out of our kingdom. Besides, Fire is a dangerous tool, and they were too poor and ignorant, ignorant to be trusted with it. It is better that we live on Mount Olympus to rule the world without threat so they can all be happy. And looking back, well, I can kind of see the argument that Zeus had. I mean, you mortals have misused fire in some respects. From the fire arrows they used to burn down your neighboring village with a squabble, going all the way up to dropping that atomic bomb on Japan. I mean, that is a kind of fire. But Prometheus was thinking the other way and decided to steal one of the powers Zeus had sensitive about, which was, of course, fire. Now, most people are just understandable that he just snuck up there and stole the fire, but it's slightly more complicated about that. There's a couple different tales that have been told of how he did it. I'm not going to officiate which one it is. Told me to keep it secret. It's, it was a major matter. <laughs> but I'll mention them both here. 
One version was when Zeus decreed that man must present a portion of each animal to be sacrificed to the gods. Prometheus decided to trick Zeus. He created two piles, one with the bones wrapped in juicy fat and the other with good meat hidden in the hide. He was then bade Zeus to pick. Zeus picked the bones. Since he had given his word, Zeus had to accept the pile as his share for future sacrifices. In anger over this trick, he took fire away from man, because in this version, man had already figured out fire. However, Prometheus lit a torch from the sun and brought it back again to man, and Zeus was angered, enraged that man once again fought fire. The other version, I brought this up, and I kind of had a little discussion with him about it, but you'll see why. Well, Prometheus was also known for his quick work. He had done over some time some trickery with Zeus that he was always not fond of. But one day, Prometheus got a golden fruit and put a note on it said, quote, for the most beautis, beautiful goddess of them all. And he threw it in the courtyard of Mount Olympus. <laughs> yes, it was a diversion. So that all the goddesses would fight over this golden fruit while the gods would cheer them on. <laughs> <laughs> Mud well, without mud. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a clean up there. But it was a diversion. His plan was working as it was, that they were all distracted. You would have him time to go into Festus' chamber to steal the fire. Now, Festus, among things, is the Greek god of fire. He's a smithing god. He makes all our weapons, like the ones you see down here. He's a blacksmith of the gods. He also helped even forge the mighty thunderbolts that Zeus himself would use, that you would see in the sky. And he's been worshipped in many centers of Greece, particularly my dear beloved Athens. Prometheus happily left the gods' playground and took the fire with him in a hollow pumpkin, or as a wall of reed, as you can see here. And he gave it to the humans, and for a period of time, the morals were happy with the fire. And it was a while until we had realized what had happened. One thing you have to factor in, for what you mortals can consider centuries, for us it's only like a months. But one chilly winter evening, Zeus gazed down from Mount Olympus. He started noticing something. The mortals were the little campfires, they were happy, they were keeping warm. He didn't take him to realize Marvels had fire, and he knew that Prometheus disobeyed him. <sighs> Zeus was mad. I still remember that night when he roared out in anger and in frustration over this. After all these times, this was it. This was the last of it they had to deal with what Prometheus had done. So he ordered uh, us gods and goddesses to go down from Mount Olympus, track him down, and bring him up so that he can be tried upon what he had done. Yes, he took the matter seriously and, well, there were some goddesses that didn't like the whole thing with the fruit thing, if you believe that had happened, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, he had to be punished. After all, by this point in time, the fire was months among the mortals. There was no way we would have been able to get that fire back. So, Zeus went to Festus, and he created some special chains. Chains that would be one that could hold a titan. And so, he chained Prometheus to what's called the Rock of Caucasus, Casabric Mountain, or the Mount of Camille, where he was chained up, unable to reach himself, so that an eagle would come down and rip out his liver. But of course, since Prometheus is immortal, and by night, the liver would regrow back and the eagle would come back again to take the liver out. The eagle was also a representation of, of Zeus himself, which I'm pretty certain that's gotta be a fate of far worse. I mean, to be helpless to watch as your liver is being ripped out, on to go again. This went on for days, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. And still the same thing happened. And at one point, even time passed, and Zeus even offered an occasion to free Prometheus in exchange for a revelation of the prophecy that predicted the dethroning of Zeus. But Prometheus refused. 
It wasn't later until certain someone came along. I'm starting off you all are aware of them. Here's this per this person doing a certain task. I don't know if you recognize him. If you don't, well, you might know him as him. <laughs> <laughs> Or him. <laughs> or him. <laughs> or, oh, that's right, I was supposed to re meet up with him next week. Her makes me best reminders. Well, if you haven't seen it, it's Hercules. Now, Hercules is, of course, the demigod son of Zeus himself. And at the time, he was going to the Twelve Labors. Now, if you don't know what the Twelve Labors are, they were basically a means of cleansing his Hercules after a bit of an incident. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a bit of an incident, if you mean the fact that old dear stepmother Hera had to drive a man, kill his wife and six children. But in order, it was a means of redeeming himself. He, he had a task to do these Twelve Labors. And it also, the process would also make him immortal. So, on the way he was doing the Twelve Labors, he came across Prometheus. He didn't know about this, because after all, we had done this before he was born. So Prometheus explained what had happened. And Hercules was quite upset. I mean, after all, he understood why the punishment was done at the time. But by this point, when Hercules had found him, everything was fine. The mortals were, for the most part, using fire properly. So when the eagle came, Hercules slayed the eagle and then got up to the chains and using his godlike strength, ripped the chains apart to free Prometheus. Well, once again, it was only a matter of time when Zeus would find out. <laughs> and yes, once again, he was not happy. I mean, now it's worse than the fact that his own son did this. And so once again, he had a soul track, track both Prometheus and Hercules down on this. Uh -oh. But <laughs> through some good talk and, well, I know he was a bit being on the stubborn side. Father, if you're watching this, let's face it, you weren't come to grips with this right away. <laughs> That's not a sign from Zeus, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Prometheus explained that the, it was all for the better, and through talking, Zeus did agree upon it. But basically, what he did is to give a reminder about what had happened. And so basically what they did is took one of the links of that chain that tied him down, and they fastened it onto the ring of Prometheus' hand to remind him of what it did and what he had done. And so Prometheus still walks this very day. So, if you ever do see him, do be sure to give him thanks. For without him, you would not have fire. And I'm most certain you would not be where you are now. So then, any questions, comments, concerns? Fix that scroll. <laughs> no? No? No. No. I, that was awesome. That was great. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna punish you so long as it's not a silly question. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was an artist once that tried to artistic me, and she did a horrible job, and I had to turn her into a spire. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, um, I have a little task for everyone. I will need um, some paper and some pens, if that's all possible. I have a quick question, though. Yes. Were you one of the goddesses that fought for that apple? I'm gonna have to be. No comment. Told, I'm gonna have to be till I told you so the line heart on this. <laughs> I, I do not have to. I do not have to acknowledge that I was one of the ones that did that. <laughs> Maybe I was. It was a pretty crush. <laughs> Careful, he'll turn you. She'll turn you into something. Taste. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It looks fine. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Anyway, as as she is getting the, the paper and pens. Oh, thank you. What I want you to do 
is to write down five things. And these five things are basically things that you've wanted to do, but for one reason or another, you not want to do it for one reason or another, maybe just didn't feel right or you didn't feel courageous about it. And then we'll go, we'll go over it and once you're all done. Well, that was a wonderful response and all that. For those of you who didn't know what we did, we did a little assignment where we write down five things that you want to do, but you never had either the courage or the wisdom to accomplish it. Now, the assignment for this is what I want you to do is pick one of these that you have on your list and try your best to accomplish it over the course of the next year. The reason being I wanted to do this assignment was because when Prometheus wanted to steal the fire from the gods, I'm certain there were some that told him it was a crazy idea. Steal fire from the gods? But he decided to do it. He knew the risk going into it. He knew the punishment that could happen. But he went and did it. And that's how we have fire today. So I hope for all of you that you will have the wisdom and the courage that I've given to many of travelers that come to my, come to my temple that you can be successful over this next year. With that, I'm, I'm done. Come now, we'll go back into the basket. There we go, nice and easy. Because I have to, unfortunately, depart. I know, I'm just here, but... Where's Bubo? What? Where's Bubo? Bubo? <laughs> In the basket. But, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you want to lie back and I need probably be needed on Mount Olympus and don't need anything. My brother Ares is probably going to launch another war in Athens and I have to be there. <laughs> Plus, brother. So <laughs> I bid you all farewell. It was wonderful meeting you all. Lionheart has wonderful company. Thank you and, and have a good day, everyone. Hail, farewell. Hail, farewell. Hail, farewell. Hail, farewell. Hail, farewell. Hail, farewell. Hail, farewell.